Welcome to The Hypnotist, brought to you by the hypnotherapist demanded by celebrities, CEOs and even royalty, Adam Cox. These recordings took place live from Adam's clinic in London's world-famous Harley Street. This features powerful hypnosis, so do not listen while driving or operating machinery. This recording is not suitable for those with epilepsy or severe mental health issues. And as you breathe in, just get a feeling of relaxation. And as you breathe out, feel that that tension is leaving your body. That's it. Relax those eyelids. And as you breathe in, again, just get a feeling of going deeper and deeper relaxed. And as you breathe out, just let go of any tension, any stress, any anxiety. That's right. Going deeper and deeper relaxed with each and every breath. So become aware of the feeling of the air going in through your nostrils, filling your lungs. Get a feeling of your body weight and where it's positioned. And with each and every breath, just notice that any tension around your eyelids and eyes is just being released breath by breath. Any feeling of tension around your forehead or the back of your head is just melting away like ice cubes in the sun. Any feelings of tension in your neck and shoulders is just feeling like it's dissipating. That's it, flowing away, letting go of that tension. Now, that's it. I want you to use your imagination to imagine what it would be like to travel Travel from the outside and go inside. What I want you to do is imagine that you're shrinking down, shrinking down so small that you can actually go inside one of your ears and imagine going into your brain. And I want you to imagine somewhere in your brain is what can only be described as a control room. And maybe this control room has flashing lights and buttons and maybe what looks like a panel with all kind of joysticks and buttons, things that control behavior from inside the brain. And if you can imagine what a place like that looks like, then just imagine that you're in that room right now. And I want you to imagine that Somewhere in that room is just the most comfortable chair that you've ever seen. And you're still you, but just the size of something tiny. But the, the chair there is proportionate to your size. And I want you to imagine climbing onto that chair and just sinking into that chair, feeling so deeply, deeply relaxed. That's right deeply, deeply relaxed and imagining that all of the weight in your arms and legs is just falling into this chair. That there is no effort, no energy left to even lift a leg or an arm. It's just there sinking into that chair. In fact, if someone was there to lift up an arm or a leg, it would be all floppy, just like the limbs of a puppet without any strings. As you sink into that chair. Imagine what it would be like to fall asleep in that chair now. Going deeper and deeper relaxed. Now. Five, four, three, two, one. Just falling asleep in that chair. And knowing that the imagination has the ability to be anywhere, any size, any location. Imagine what it would be like to be in that same control room, seeing a part that represents your conscious mind fast asleep on that chair and you're still small inside this control room inside your own mind and at this point in time the control room is completely and totally empty just you and I want you to 
explore the control room. I want you to see that when you're behind the control room, there's almost like a large screen that represents what could be seen in the outside world, the real world. But equally, there's another screen that represents internal thought, so any imagined realities can be there on that screen too. You have the ability to see the external world as it is, or create an internal world based on memories or imagination. Notice there are lots of buttons and levers and lights, and you don't really know what they do, but you get the sense that in this control room they do important things. And I also want you to get a sense that in this control room, only one part can be in control at any one point in time. That it isn't possible for two or even three different parts to be fighting over the controls. You accept that only one part, perhaps an emotional part, can be responsible for the main control panel at any one particular point in time. And I want you to get a sense that you're going to be joined in this control room by different parts of your unconscious, perhaps emotional parts, resourceful parts. And I want you to get a sense that each of these parts has a role to play. I want you to perhaps take a chair, a different chair. You can see the other part, that conscious part, fast asleep in that chair. Or maybe you just want to stand near the control panel. As the first part comes in, and this part, this part is a, a glowing part. This part represents joy, happiness. As that part enters the room, they can't help but smile. They glow with a warmth. And they are now standing at the control panel. You can communicate to them and they can communicate to you. And notice how effortlessly they move. There's a freeness to how they move, a positive energy, an effortless smile. You get a sense that this part, this part sees challenges as opportunities. Eternally optimistic that everything will just work out well for you. And you like it when this part is at the control panel. Because those nightmare challenges just seem to be hiccups, blips, on the way to something great and amazing for you. When you're happy, this part is in control. But it goes the other way around. When this part takes control of the panel, you start to feel happier. And notice that when you feel happy, you can feel grateful. You appreciate all the positive things that are happening in your life and things tend to go your way. But I want you to hear firsthand what the part that represents joy is telling you that their intention, their function, their purpose is for you and just allow them just for a few seconds to explain to you what they are doing for you. And as you listen, perhaps there's so some new insight to the function that this role of joy and happiness has in your life. Perhaps, perhaps it's for you to not just live, but enjoy living, to make the most out of every opportunity, 
and to think positively about past memories and optimistically about the future. But they may have some other role to play. We just know that they're doing something positive and useful for you. I don't want you to say goodbye to the part that represents joy. And then welcome a different part. A different part into the control room that approaches the panel. And this part is fear, or perhaps anxiety. Perhaps this part looks different. Maybe their facial expression looks a bit worried or nervous. You get a sense that this part isn't trying to ruin your life and cripple you with anxiety. You get a sense that this part is there to protect, to constantly be vigilant for threats or things that can go wrong. And I want you to feel really grateful for this part. This part that is always looking out for dangers looking out for things that could harm you or hurt you, trying to steer your life in the right direction. Now the downside of this function is that sometimes they can see dangers and worries when there aren't any. But you still can appreciate that the intention of this part is to protect you. And I want you to communicate with that part that you're grateful. You're grateful for its intention, its desire to protect you and to keep you safe. And then notice the reaction of that part. And then I want you to hear from this part other than protecting you and keeping you safe, what it's trying to do for you and hear what this part has to say. And perhaps there's new information that you hadn't really thought of in that way before, but sometimes perhaps you've been annoyed at a tendency to feel fear or anxiety or worry. But now that you know it comes from a place of protection, but also evaluation, this part is constantly evaluating all the different meanings attached to different things to look for danger. And I want you to get a sense that when you evaluate things in new ways, Suddenly, it's easier to reduce the feeling of anxiety, worry, or fear. But also, sometimes, sometimes by preparing in the right way, you can cultivate this part watching out for dangers, but at the point where you have to do something, maybe you can enjoy that thing that previously caused worry or anxiety or inertia? What if fear is there to protect and look out for dangers on the way, but joy is meant to be on the control panel for when you actually experience those new experiences? Because you can always learn about these things after. But it's not useful sometimes to have fear and control of the panel at the very point where you're doing the thing. Fear perhaps can help you prepare for the thing that you might be thinking about. I want you to thank fear again for its desire to protect you. And I want you to also communicate with fear that you're going to be talking to fear much more often about things that you are genuinely worried about and things that you don't need to worry about. And as you say goodbye to fear, a new resource, emotion, enters the control room. And this part, some would call anger. 
I want you to look at the colour of this part. The eyes. The reaction. The tone of voice. This feisty, abrupt part isn't trying to get you into trouble. This part, again, has a really important role to play in your life. Because for anger, it's all about making sure that things are fair for you. Because in life, sometimes people will try and take advantage, try and shortchange you, try and operate in a way that is exploitative in some way. And this role of anger is to either stop these things from happening or to make sure that if you are treated unfairly or are wronged in some way, that things get back on track. This is a fiery part, a passionate part, a part that wants to protect your values and standards, the rules that you live by. And when you think in the past, when people have disrespected you, been rude to you, that anger part is quick to take control, to make sure that your values and standards are protected, that you are treated fairly, and I want you to thank this part for keeping your standards high. And notice the expression on the face where you truly are grateful for the role that this part has in your life. In many ways, this is your own personal bodyguard to make sure that you're treated correctly, treated well, that people don't violate your standards. But I want you to pass some feedback onto this part that represents anger. And that is that while you completely respect and admire and appreciate the role that this part has in your life, sometimes, only sometimes, a bit more patience may be useful. And if that part agrees, I then want you to listen to this part's role firsthand from this part as to what this part is trying to do for you. And perhaps there's things that you can do for that part that me and you and that part have a better, more useful relationship. you get on with all these parts, the more that they will serve you better than ever before. Because in current times, sometimes there's a desire to be positive about everything. But sometimes it's justified to be angry about certain things. Sometimes, sometimes it's appropriate to worry or fear anxiety. And the more you appreciate the functions of these parts, the more that they can operate, operate in a way that truly serves and helps you. And for that, you can be grateful for. I want you to say goodbye to anger as it leaves the control room and then disgust enters the room. And you know it's disgust that face the way that that part moves notice you can tell just by the way that that part swaggers all the way to the control panel just how opinionated that part is this is a brutal part with no filter 
it lets you know exactly what it's thinking. And this goal is also about protection. It's trying to protect you, but this time from things that can do you harm, either physically or socially. Disgust is about preventing you from being poisoned in some way. Because poison can come in many different forms, not just the poison of dangerous things to eat or drink, but sometimes people can be poisonous to your energy. Sometimes places can be poisonous to your soul. And when disgust is at the control panel, that will let you know exactly which things, people and places to avoid. And I want you to thank this part of disgust for trying to look out for you. Notice the expression. When you communicate that genuine gratitude for the intention of this part, notice that this part wants to serve you, to do an even better job. But disgust requires perspective. Sometimes it's possible to feel disgusted based on false information or outdated ideas. And I want you to promise, promise that you will provide regular feedback to this part that represents disgust so it can protect you in ever more beneficial ways. That from this point forward, it's going to be a team. That you appreciate the role that she has to play, but equally, you'll let her know if she's getting disgusted at the wrong things. I want you to listen firsthand to what you feel her intentions are for you and for your future. Be willing to give any feedback now so that that collaborative partnership can be implemented immediately. I want you to say goodbye to the part that represents disgust, knowing, knowing that this part again is helping you in a very, very important way. You need that part to stop you making errors of judgment. Because sometimes it's easy to stop doing certain things if you link enough disgust to it. That it becomes a way for you to raise your standards and improve the quality of your life and your future just by having the part of disgust help you in the ways that will actually benefit you most. As you say goodbye to disgust, see her strut off in only the way that that part can. And then suddenly, a very quiet part enters the room. The expression is glum. This part sadness rarely is in control of the panel which is probably a good thing because when sadness has the control panel the energy levels all go down there's not a time for action but reflection you wouldn't want sadness in control when you're busy working you wouldn't want sadness in control when you're socializing or connecting with other people. But that doesn't mean that sadness doesn't have a role to play. Sadness is not the part to fill you with energy and optimism. Sadness. Sadness is all about connecting. Connecting with yourself. 
giving yourself permission to allow things that have affected you to be experienced and then to move on. Because one of the side effects of life is that sometimes bad things happen. Sometimes we lose people we love. Sometimes we're treated badly or unfairly. Sometimes accidents happen that can really affect our lives in significant ways. And while sometimes the tendency can be to put that positive spin or to get angry, sometimes the best thing to do is to experience that pain, that disappointment, that hurt. To really experience it, to learn from it, and then to move on. As you look at sadness at the control panel, I want you to thank sadness. Because without sadness there would be no joy. Without sadness, you couldn't learn those important lessons as quickly as without sadness. And I want you to thank sadness for that vital role to play. And whereas in the past you might have tried to keep sadness away from the control panel, I want you to communicate to sadness that, that this part has a vital role to play. And that you truly want this role of sadness to have brief but significant moments in your life only when needed. And I want you to ask sadness what this part truly considers its function and intention to be for you and just listen to what this part has to say. to let sadness know that you give it permission when needed for it to take the control panel and your promise is that you will reflect and learn from those experiences some people choose to live in sadness allowing sadness to permanently take control but that victimhood that paralysis robs the individual that sadness is in control of of all energy, ambition any sense of activity and forward thinking but in small doses sadness has a very important role to play and I want you again to thank sadness for its important role in your life and I want you to give the part of sadness a hug Notice that as sad as sadness is, it appreciates that connection. Now when sadness leaves and you're just in the control panel all by yourself, I want you to think of a question. Sometimes, perhaps in the past, these parts have been trying to compete with each other for control of the panel. What if they could work together? What if they could work as a committee? Using all of that collective knowledge and insight and intuition to decide amongst themselves who is best place to take control at the points where they can have the biggest impact. And I want you to invite all of them back into the control room at the same time. I want you to communicate with all of them. They have all a vital role to play. They are all just as important as all the other parts. But what you would like is more harmony, more collaboration, them working as a team rather than competing with each other individually. Because what if 
after sadness has given you the opportunity to learn and reflect, that suddenly joy could take control and give you a sense of optimism and energy? What if the role of fear could constantly look out for dangers and take control whenever a real danger is there? But then, then perhaps, give another part, like joy the opportunity to celebrate the fact that you've avoided a near miss once you've taken the insight from fear? What if anger can genuinely take control when your standards have not been met? When someone tries to take advantage, but you don't want to live in anger. Very quickly you can then move to a different state. Although naturally it might be that joy is in control most of the time, it should never be the case that joy is always in control because these other parts have vital roles to play. And I want you to ask them all as a collective if they'd all be willing to work as a team in harmony, in full collaboration, using the wisdom that they've gained from years to decide amongst themselves who should best take control of the panel depending on the context and situation that they're in and allow them enough time until they all agree that that's exactly what will happen moving forward and then you and them collectively just imagine putting your arms over their shoulders so collectively there is a group hug now of all six of you five different emotional states plus you all working collectively collaboratively to take your life in exactly the direction that you want to take it and I want you to all stand behind the control panel and look on that big screen as to what your future may look like now each part having a vital role to play wonder what what different options you would have in dealing with different situations maybe situations that in the past you've struggled with now will be very different how you will make sure you're treated fairly how you will avoid danger how you will avoid poisonous people places or things how you can enjoy the very best that life has to offer being mindful of those experiences. When you're tasting delicious food, joy should be at the control panel, appreciating and enjoying every element of flavor. When good things are happening in life, it should be joy that's there to make sure that you can milk every part of that experience. But sometimes it's important to reflect and learn from when things don't quite go right. And don't you need fear to be there to constantly warn you of dangers as you look at your future notice that you're well equipped now to navigate life's ups and downs that somehow it feels that it's not just you living life but you with a team of people inside acting in your interest to give you the best life possible People aren't dealing with just you now, they're dealing with you and a team on the inside. And that gives you a feeling of confidence, resourcefulness, and that you can take on much bigger challenges than you ever thought you could, because now it's you and a team of people taking on those challenges. I want you to give all of those different parts one final hug, thanking them again for that vital role that they have to play in your life saying goodbye and then stepping into that part that's been fast asleep on that comfortable chair in the control room reconnecting with your physical body noticing that as you breathe in you feel that breath as you breathe out you feel that outward breath and I want you to allow all parts of your unconscious to connect with your conscious all resourceful parts will awaken shortly, working in harmony and collaboration to give you the best ability to make decisions, plan
plan for the future and learn from mistakes while avoiding the pitfalls that life quite often throws up. Very soon I will count from 1 to 10 to awaken you and you will awaken feeling highly optimistic about the future, feeling very resourceful, feeling that the next few days are going to be noticeably better and moving you in exactly the right direction. All parts will awaken in the moment when I count to 10. Starting to count to awaken you. One, two, three, waking up. Four, five, six, more alert. Seven, eight, open your eyes, open your eyes. Nine, ten, wide awake, wide awake, wide awake.